Welcome everyone, Quistine here with a discussion about the Total War Saga Troy. I am playing as Hector and I am going to play several turns while I talk about the game and its future. This is a game that has been exclusive to the Epic Game Store uh, due to a deal that Epic Games signed with Creative Assembly. Basically Epic Games gave them a lot of money to put their, ga uh, their game for free for 24 hours on the Epic Game Store and uh, gave and give them exclusivity for a period of time. Troy, that period of time is expiring soon, so the game is going to come out on Steam. Now, uh, here's here's the issue: the game, by many accounts, is a failure. It does some things very well, but ultimately, it is considered a failed game. To the point that Creative Assembly they had the DLC plan before the game came out. They released those DLCs, so they released the Amazon the DLC, the Blood DLC, Ajax and Diomedes, but since then, nothing. And in effect, the game just kinda is, just kinda has been forgotten, fallen by the wayside. A lot of people still play Total War games. Total War Warhammer is played by a lot of people. War Warhammer 2 specifically is played by a large number of people. Uh, but, but Troy, even though it got downloaded by a significant number of people, is no longer played by that many people. There have been fixes and changes and improvements and bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. But of at the end of the day, it's it just was too Troy. little too late and they didn't That's fix the fundamental problems that enemies. this title was dealing with. So this game, like other Total War games, it has a campaign mode, it has a, it has a turn based campaign mode and it, then it has uh, in a sandbox and then it has real time battles where two armies, when two armies clash on, on the campaign no level. Um, the campaign mode in this game is probably the best in the series. I'm not exaggerating on this. The economic system is the best in the series and most interesting because you have uh, five different resources and then you also have to worry about divine well, the Greek gods. Then you have your own faction uh, systems dependent on the faction you're playing. So as Hector, I have the League, which grows in strength the more allied uh, the more territory my allies control, not Hector, but your allies as Hector. And you gain significant bonuses for that. So you're incentivized to seek out alliances. Then you have the faction that you share with uh, Paris as Priam's heir, where you're basically in a competition with Paris to be declared Priam's heir. And you gain enormous bonuses for doing so. Just kind of worth, uh, just worth uh, saying that. Now, here's... Uh, now here is uh, and, and you also have a campaign where like the Trojan War was fought beneath the tr walls of Troy and Troy is an incredibly tough city to crack it has a stack of 20 units that defend it's actually it's more like a garrison of 20 units and it has an actual army as well on top of that defending the city so it's a very formidable city it's very well defended and then the Trojans as well have their own allies and it basically leads to kind of like an actual total war between two powerhouses that are going to fight each other to the death. Defending it is, benefits. on a concept level, very, very interesting. Um, in terms of practical terms, it was undermined by the balance, the uh, even on a campaign level of the game. But many issues have been improved, many things have been fixed. And right now it's in a much better state than it was before. But... Here's the problem. Total War is really about the battles. The campaign is secondary. I know a lot of people just play for a campaign, but the battles are what make Total War interesting for a lot of people. You look at the YouTube channels of Total War, they're not focused on the campaigns. They're focused on the bloody battles because that's what's interesting to play. That's what's interesting to see for a lot of people. And the battles in this game just are not that great. In fact, the battles in Total War in general aren't really that interesting. They haven't been for a while. I claim with the exception of Total War Warhammer. And why is that? Well, with Total War Warhammer, what Creative Assembly decided to do is they decided to redesign their entire battle system. 
or add a great deal of variety to that battle system through certain changes that of they were course, making. I so, uh, with uh, Total War Warhammer, sure they changed the pathfinding system. They vastly improved the performance of the game, so you could have uh, big battles on weaker computers or battles running a lot better than they used to before. Changed pathfinding, changed how units behave towards one another, removed uh, sync kills, made a bunch of changes that made things better. On top of that, and that's all for the good, but on top of that, they also added magic, monsters, single entity units. What do I mean by single entity? Well, usually you have troops like in, you know, dozens, hundreds, whatever, but then you have heroes or agents that are single entity, like Hector himself, for instance, is uh, is his own unit, and he can take multiple units down in his own right. That's the system that they added. And it was... Although a lot of people who are like realism and historical, uh, uh, who are interested in the historical aspect of Total War, were annoyed by that because then they took those kind of changes and started and implemented some of them for kingdoms, then in Troy, like single entity, and to some degree monsters, though not really. Um, um, Although a lot, uh, although some people were disappointed and angry with that because it's like, oh, it's making it more arcadey. Overall, I'd say it made it worked. It worked very well in point of fact. The battles became a lot more interesting, and the variety because of the variety that was brought to the battlefield. That, by the way, has only increased since then uh, due to other changes that they've uh, implemented, like dragon's breaths, for instance, changes to magic, changes to factions, some unique mechanics to certain factions. Like they've done a lot in Total War Warhammer to really improve the battles. Like the campaign gameplay is inferior to many other titles and that is a problem that lets those games down. But in terms like battle gameplay it is vastly superior. And the battles are important. If you're playing on a higher difficulty, you're going to be fighting a lot of damn battles. If the battles are boring as hell, then you're not going to be interested in playing this game. Like actually, most of the time when you fight, when you're fighting a battle, you're fighting because you have to, because the auto resolve in this game is going to put you at the disadvantage. And that's, um, and that, and if the battles are not great, then it just doesn't work. So with Total War Warhammer, that was the solution. They could have gone and improved them, made the infantry combat, made a bunch of things, balance changes, difficulty changes, improved a lot. They could have done that, absolutely. Defender of Troy. But they decided no, not trying. to. And therein lies uh, therein lies the issues that brought enemies. down Free Kingdoms in a major way because the battles in Free Kingdoms ended up being less than stellar and also affected this game. So if the improvements that Total War Warhammer brought to battles is because of things like single entities and monsters magic and that well what happens when you more or less have the same battles but without those monsters without that magic sure you have single entities in this in this game but that's not enough well it ends up just being significantly weaker uh than warhammer and a lot less interesting and that's the issue here in this video i'm gonna try and avoid fighting a single battle because they are just that horrible and on top of that you don't even want to fight a single battle because most of the time the auto resolve will just uh, will just be better. I mean, and that's something that can happen on say Warhammer as well. That's you know sometimes it's better to auto resolve, but the battles can be so much more interesting that you don't want uh, to auto resolve. Like you actually want to fight at least some battles, not necessarily all of them, but you want uh, to fight uh, some battle, uh, some battles. And there, and there in lies the issue with Troy. The battles are not interesting. The reason they're not interesting is because infantry combat just does like infantry combat is what they focused on in this particular game. What's the problem with that? Infantry combat just doesn't work very efficiently in Total War. Ranged units will do more damage. Chariots in this game will do more damage, or cavalry in other games will do more damage. Monsters will do more damage. So if I have, focusing on infantry is just a waste of time. Yes, I'm getting a lot of infantry units for Hector over here, but really they're not going because right now, um, like the reason I'm doing that right now is because I just don't have choice. But once I get chariots and once I get some special units, 
I really will not care much about infantry with the exception of some very specific units that are the exception rather than rule like the guards of Troy just because they are that formidable but they are an exception most of the time going with chariots going with ranged units and maybe uh, with giants that's gonna w work out now uh, with this game they also miss they also decide to go with like some kind of stupid middle ground between mythology having mythological units like minotaurs centaurs and all that and a full-on, full-blown historical gain. And that displeased everyone. No one. Like, the people who want mythology in their games, like, basically loved Age of Mythology, like myself, we're not happy about the situation because we want the Age of Mythology again. That's what we fucking want. The people who want the historical game, obviously, they're pissed because Creative Assembly has more or less abandoned historical games, so they're not happy. So, who the hell is? So, they went with something called the myth, uh, the truth behind the myth. And what happens here is that you technically have mythological units, but they're basically cosplayers. So you have centaurs, but they're literally just guys riding horses. You have harpies, but they're just female javelin men. It's like, ooh, that's great. The centaurs, by the way, are useless because chariots are a lot better. Uh, the the harpies are not important because you can get plenty of good javelin men. In some, and dependent on your faction, you have much better range units than anything they offer. And that leaves you with the giants, which yeah, the giants are real are the only infantry unit, with some exceptions like like uh, the guards of Troy. The giants are one of those heavy infantry units that is actually worth using, but that's it. They are the exception. They are not the rule in uh, in this case. And that's um, and that's the problem with that. So they messed up the whole mythological uh system they made a grand total war game but they don't have the battles that are interesting exciting and well designed on top of that the problem with infantry and total war games is that if you're playing on a higher difficulty level the uh, ai units get significant bonuses in melee guess what happens then you just focus on ranged because that's the way you win in that kind of situation that's how you make do with it that's how you win uh, battle, uh, battles against ridiculous odds, which you will certainly have in this game and other Total War games if you're playing on a higher difficulty level. And so infantry, which was really the primary means of fighting combat in this day, is just not workable. Now again, they could fix this by adopting a different way of design games, building their games. But what they've decided to do now that the game is coming out on Steam is do something called uh, Mephas. Mephas is going to be a DLC, a paid DLC or paid version of the game. Now, I do think it's ridiculous to have to pay for a version of the game that's basically designed to fix the major issues that a lot of people have with this title. But then again, we also got this game for free, so yeah, we can... We can defense. accept that. To Never Again, it's not great. It's not perfect. Um, the but what they're doing with that, they are adding those Engage monsters. They're the going foe. full on Age of Mythology. You're going to have god powers. Four. You're going to have the gods intervening in battles. As they did in the Iliad and the Odyssey and the Aeneid. Right, the gods played an active role in the conflict. They were just like, oh, we're going to give you a buff and some spe some special unit, maybe, or all that. No, the gods were active participants in the conflict. That was something that happened. Like, that's the whole point. That's what, uh, that's the charm of it, part of the charm of it. Like Achilles crying, going crying to his mother for a suit of armor, or when he gets... Um, uh, treated very badly by Agamemnon, goes to his mother, uh, who then begs, uh, uh, then begs Zeus to, uh, to ensure that the Achaeans are, uh, are going to lose so that they will miss Achilles. That is a big, and then when Patroclus dies, his mother getting, uh, and Achilles armor, uh, then he gets a new one crafted by Hephaestus. Right. Achilles following his enemies, slaughtering them by dozens, hundreds, and then suddenly uh, 
the a river god is uh, like get gets pissed off, begs him to stop. He doesn't, and almost kills him. It yes. So that's a big part of the myth, the legend, and we're gonna have that in Mythos. So it's gonna be a lot more accurate to you know the source material, the as it were. Receiving reinforcements. And that's that I feel is going to make the game a lot more interesting to play. It's going to add a great deal of variety to the battles. We're going to get things. We're going to get mythological units. We're going to have real Minotaurs. We're going to have Cyclops. We're going to have actual flying harpies and everything that they entail. And we're going to get the diversity in terms of gameplay in battles that is going to vastly improve them. And that is going to have a pretty major impact on it. Now, the question with all of this is as follows. Is it enough? Is it enough to really save uh, this game? Right? Is that sufficient to make this game relevant again? Well, maybe. The problem is, it's all well and good to make significant changes to a game, but the boat has kind of sailed, and it, to a degree, it feels that they're doing it to try and get some steam sales because they know the steam sales are going to be bad if they do nothing so they're just trying to make these improvements but the problem is without a good marketing campaign it's just not going to work and in the case of creative assembly yes they have a bunch of content creators that make content for their games but they can't rely on them because many of their content creators which just to give you an idea of how people feel about troy Many of their content creators basically said, I am not interested in this fucking game. Or even if they did make some videos, even if they did tr did at one point make some content for the game, they quickly quit because, again, there just wasn't anything to really go for. And therein lies, I guess you could say, the issue. I'm just going to position my range units on this side, militias in the back to protect, to cover my rear, Hector and my other hero to move in the center. And my strategy is and this is where we can see really the problems with, uh, or the limitations with Total War Battles if you don't have those kind of monstrous units with that kind of variety. It's like, it's just incredibly limited and really boring. What I'm really doing here is nothing special. I'm just moving an army in double ranked or triple rank with some reserves in the triple rank and I'm just gonna charge their I'm gonna rely on my heroes to carry the, their heroes while the armies duke it out that's gonna be my entire strategy if you think that's interesting no it's not it's actually pretty d brainless and boring and this is by the way an issue that has been in other Total War games as well make no mistake like it's not like Troy is special in this respect it's actually an issue Shogun had it's an issue a lot of their titles had and it's something Warhammer improved by by adding that variety in combat and by really changing the way the game was played in many ways. I'm just gonna charge my... I'm gonna try and get Hector. And I'm going to ignore the enemy hero and just charge in. In there. Solid in defense. I will. So yeah, I think Mephos is not going to work for the reason uh, that I've given. Divine might. Companion of Ares. But I do think it will bring genuine improvements to the game that shouldn't be completely ignored. I just don't think like... If Creative Assembly is thinking that 
they can just re-release it and that the steam release alone will be successful they're they've got the wrong they're making the wrong business decision but maybe as far as they're concerned they don't care really that would be nice if suddenly to Troy Total War managed to achieve a level of success that it didn't in the past. But it just probably is not going to work as well as they think it will. I'm just trying to bring my skirmishers in the back so I can hit their units. Right, I've broken their front line. Like, this is a kind of the thing about uh, Total War. The best thing you can do is just have a single cohesive front line. Maybe use some distracting units to get a portion of their army out of the way. But for the most part, having a cohesive single file front line is the best thing you can get go for. Like, if you split your units up, which, by the way, is something that happened in a lot of battles throughout history. If you split your units up, you're just going to end up suffering significantly because of that. Plus, it's much harder to control there, right? Alright, significant portions of the enemy army are breaking apart. And they do have some uh, axemen there. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. Just using Hector's special ability so he can do more damage. I mean, I think it's pretty telling that some of the older Total War games actually have battles that are far more interesting than this. Or any uh, any of the more recent historical Total War games, including Rome 2. I mean, granted, Rome 1 is not the best game in the world. It really isn't. But it does have uh, quite a few things on offer. So that's Medieval 2 that you just don't see in these kind of... In these more modern post-Empire Total War games. Oh, Empire, the plague on the Total War series that you were. Got them right where I want it. One of your units has no more ammunition. Yeah, performance is not great here because I'm playing on extreme. Warriors have been routed. Just gonna get Hector in it. Victory is close enough to taste. If I kill their generals, the entire army will collapse. Like, if they really want infantry combat to work, then they really, really need to change to remove the. Bo uh, combat bonuses. Alright. And there we go. Close victory. Would have been a bloody affair. Not resolved. I took casualties. Sure. A thousand of them. But they lost more men uh, than I did. And they also had brought more men than I did in the, uh, in the battle. But yeah, that's the thing. And here's the thing. These battles in the early game are some of the hardest in the game. Once, I, once you start go rolling with that, it's like it becomes fucking pathetic. But then you start also encountering things like balance issues Good. because yeah. certain factions just do just end up working much better given the way the battles uh, are balanced. So, for instance, Achilles, he's supposed to be this military powerhouse. He isn't. Because his units are, like, his entire faction is about speed, so he can't win. He won't, he can't win against the f extremely powerful military units that someone like, um, 
Like, he can't win against... Uh, he can't easily win against the range powerhouse that Paris is. It's kind of laughable that Paris is said to be in a hard starting position. Like, really, he just has an island to conquer, that's all. I'm sure we will both profit from this exchange. So, yeah, this is... Uh, but that's more of, more of a question of, you know, limited budget. Bad. I also think there's some bad decisions they were made. Like, the myth... Uh, the truth behind the myth, yeah, that was just a really, really bad decision, but, uh, like, some things, like, some, how the balance would work, that just lack of time, a lack of interest, I suppose, in trying to, f uh, actually fix some balance issues that exist, especially on higher pass. difficulties, because they do exist. So I have won that battle, and then we have their capital, which looks like it's under siege, ladies and gentlemen. Prince Hector. Righteous and true. All right, and that's all there is to say. Will they succeed in revitalizing Troy Total War? Maybe by making it Age of Mythology, which they should have done from the start, by the way. They should have embraced that idea, like stop this bullshit of trying to please both sides. You can't have it both ways, Creative Assembly. You can't make a game which historical fans that you, you're you just trying to pay lip service. Like it's li literally just trying to pay lip service to them because they're cause it's not making a genuine effort for things that they would want, nor are you gonna uh, uh, please the people who do care about the myths and the legends and you know having all these creatures and all that kind of stuff You can't do both things. It just doesn't work like that It would have been better if Mephos had been free I suppose that might have been or if the game was cheaper priced Maybe that would have interested people more But yeah, I don't necessarily believe it will work But not for some of the reasons the other people have cited like if you're a if you're a fan of this period, this is a game that you want to check out. But that's kind of it, really. And that's different from caring about, like, Warhammer Fantasy. You may not give a shit about Warhammer Fantasy, but you may want to play this game just because of the period it covers. Go see and sign out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.